Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, video in a series of videos about safety inventory. Uh, in this, uh, this is the last video in the series and in this we'll talk about the impact of replenishment policies on safety inventory. So um, in this week we looked at the impact of aggregation on safety inventory, the impact of component commonality, the impact of uh, postponement, and we also looked at a couple of other things uh, uh, in the uh, series of videos that are posted this week. The last thing we'll talk about is the impact of replenishment policies. What does this mean? So we know that there are two types of replenishment policies. I talked about this at the beginning of the previous chapter, where you can you either have continuous review policies or you have periodic review policies. So continuous review policies is where you keep a continuous track of your inventory and uh, you order the same number of items every time you place an order, but the order is triggered if your inventory reaches a certain level, right? The best example I gave you for this was, say, replenishment of Easy Pass. So let's say you have fifty dollars of Easy Pass on your uh, on your Easy Pass, and as you go through tolls, if the if the threshold reaches ten dollars, uh, an order is uh, an order of fifty dollars is triggered, and you get fifty dollars added onto your ca card as soon uh, onto your Easy Pass as soon as the invent as inventory of dollars on your Easy Pass reaches below ten, right? but the order quantity is the same, but the time between orders is different. But so this is called a continuous review policy because you continuously track how much inventory you have. As opposed to periodic review policies where you only track inventory at periodic uh, times. So say for example, the example that I gave you for this was the replenishment of um, uh, vending machines. So vending machines are usually replenished uh, at fixed points in time. So let's say that there's a driver who goes to a vending machine and replenish, let's say, the sodas inside a vending machine every week. So during that week, if a lot of people buy sodas in the first couple of days and the vending machine runs out of sodas, it, it, will, come, it will be out of sodas for the rest of the time till the person comes back and adds, adds the sodas back to the vending machine, right? So there is no p continuous review of inventory. The review is done at fixed points in time. So that's a fixed, sorry, um, uh, it's not a continuous review policy. It is a periodic review policy. So having these two different types of policies, how does that affect safety inventory? So that's the last thing we're going to talk about. So let's first look at continuous review policy. So when you have a continuous review policy, let's say that the average demand per period is D. So here period can be either week, day, or month. That's the usual time that you're looking at. Standard deviation of demand per period is sigma d, and the average lead time is L. So the demand during lead time, the average demand during lead time is just d times L, and the standard deviation of demand during lead time is square root of L times sigma d. We saw that. And then we can calculate the safety stock the usual way that we did. So we do the normal, uh, normal inverse of the cycle service level times square root of L times d, so the standard deviation of demand during lead time. That will give us the safety stock. You add the safety stock to the average value, and that will give you the reorder point, right? So we talked about this last week. So this is the, this is what you do when you have uh, continuous review policies. But what if you have periodic review policies, right? So lot size is determined by pre-specified order up to levels. So you have a certain order up to levels. So your vending machine has a certain uh, number of slots that it can have, and you'll always have to fill up the vending machine. So you have to order up to a certain level, right? So the average demand per period is D, the standard deviation is sigma D, um, the lead time is the same, and then capital T, this is a new one, is the review interval. So that is the, so it can be a week, it can be a day, it is the time between when the inventory is reviewed. And you have a cycle service level or whatever desired cycle service level you have. Then your cycle service level has to satisfy demand not just during lead time, but also time between replenishments. So essentially, when you when you do these calculations, instead of just looking at L periods, you'll be looking at T plus L periods, right? With that, the average demand during the T plus L periods will be T plus L times D, Standard deviation will be, instead of just square root of L, will be square root of T plus L times sigma D. And uh, the order up to level, the reorder point or order up to level will be 
the average demand, which was D times T plus L, plus the safety stock, which was uh, the inverse of the standard normal distribution times the standard deviation uh, times, uh, yeah, so with the standard deviation square root of T plus L times sigma D. If you do all of that, you'll get the order up to level, right? And the average lot size will be so D times T. So that's how much you will order, essentially. So uh, let's look at an example again. There's a nice example here in the textbook. You can look at that. So right here. So let's say that weekly demand for Legos at uh, a particular store is normally distributed with a mean of 2,500 boxes, a standard deviation of 500. The replenishment lead time is two weeks. The lead time is two weeks. And the store manager has decided to review inventory every four weeks, right? And this is a common thing. Let's say that um, um, uh, there is an old navy. Sometimes there are some old navies where they have a lot of turnover, where they take inventory at the end of every day. Or sometimes they take inventory at the end of every week, or sometimes a couple of weeks. Here, they have decided to review inventory at the end of every four weeks. So you're not keeping track of exactly how much inventory you have during those four weeks. You're just selling what you have on hand. So you can potentially run out of inventory for over those four weeks. So that's why the replenishment is much more difficult. That's something to keep in mind. Now, assuming a periodic review inventory policy, which is what this is, uh, evaluate the safety inventory that the store should carry uh, to provide a cycle service level of 90%. So you want a service level of 90%. What is the order up to level uh, in this case, right? So average demand is 2,500. Standard deviation is 500, right? And that's a weekly demand, right? So we know that. So the uh, replenishment, uh, so lead time is four, two weeks and review interval is four weeks. So we need to keep track of inventory over six weeks, potentially. So that's how much weeks that we'll have to keep track of instead of just the two weeks that you would do if you are doing continuous review. So with that, the average demand will be two plus four, so six times 2,500, which will be 15,000. Standard deviation of demand during those uh, T plus L periods will be square root of T plus L, which is six, six times 500, it'll be uh, 3,000, square root of 3,000 will be about 1,225. It's not exactly that, but uh, it's approximately that, right? Uh, yeah, so just, just to, so this should be T plus L within parentheses. Just keep that in mind. Okay. Does T plus L yeah, the sigma d is outside, so it's just square root of t plus square root of six times the five hundred. So in this case, it would be square root of six times five hundred. That's why it's one thousand two twenty five. If the square root went over five hundred, this would be a much smaller number. So square root of six times five hundred is one thousand two twenty five. With that, we can calculate the uh, safety stock, which is the inverse of the standard normal distribution, times the standard deviation, right? Which is 1,225. With that, we get a, a safety stock of 1,570 boxes. So once you have the safety stock, you can add the safety stock to the an average demand. That gives you an order up to level of 16,570. So that's the store manager orders the difference between 16,570 and the current inventory every four weeks. So remember, it's the order up to level. So if your vending machine ha can take, say, 1,000 sodas, and if the driver comes in and there are 100 sodas, the driver will only fill 900 sodas, right? The difference between the order up to level and how much inventory you have. But if uh, the driver comes in and there are already 500 sodas there, the driver will only refill 500 sodas because the uh, uh, vending machine can only take 1,000. So once you have a fixed order up to level, the amount that you order every time will be different based upon how much inventory you already have on hand. And that's something to keep in mind, right? So if we compare this with the safety inventory that you would have, if this was a continuous review process, then your safety inventory would be much lower because in, because in this case, the safety inventory would be proportional to square root of L. So instead of doing square root of six times 500, you would do square root of two times 500, which would be much lower standard deviation, much lower safety stock, and your reorder point will be much lower. And so you'll hold much less inventory in stock. So 
if you are able to do continuous review of inventory, which is not always possible. Think of Old Navy. They cannot do a continuous review, which means that they have to keep people back and count inventory every single day. That is a tall order, right? So that's that's a costly process. So it's not always possible to do a continuous review of inventory. But if you can, then it's much cheaper to do continuous review of inventory rather than doing periodic review of inventory, in which case you have to keep track of inventory over a much larger time period. All right? That's the last uh, that's the last piece. So how do these different replenishment policies affect uh, uh, safety inventory? Well, periodic replenishment policies require more safety inventory than continuous review policies for the same lead time and level of product availability. And that's the key point, key takeaway here, right? So um, there are other things that I'll let you read on your own, but these were the big uh, important pieces that I wanted to talk about this week. So uh, again, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to email me. I'll uh, see you all next week when we'll be talking about uh, seasonal inventory management, right? So this is the last uh, uh, week when we'll talk about safety inventory. And uh, again, if you have any questions about that, please feel free to email me. I'll see you in the next video. Right, take care.